Well, 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 we are one day before the NHL draft, and the rumors have been piling up like never before. Now, you know the protocol. I record these videos the night before they are public on YouTube. So, if by the time this video is public, there is already a trade with this player, some other big moves have already happened, then okay, we'll make a second video, we'll talk about everything that happens after the fact, because I do live on the West Coast, so a lot of news comes out when I'm asleep, and it doesn't help that I sleep very late anyway. So if there is a trade, then okay, we'll talk about it later. But for now, we are talking about the Anaheim Ducks. Because when it comes to their prized trade ship, one of the guys that we have known has been on the block for months and months and months, when it comes to Trevor Zegris, it turns out we may actually now know where it is he wants to go. Now, when it comes to the Zegras trade conversations, we have had a bunch of teams rotating in and around the conversation. Montreal has been one of the main ones. We had talked about the Chicago Blackhawks. I think there was a conversation about Detroit thrown in there. But if we wanted to go over and learn what it is that he wants, let's go out there and talk about this article on The Athletic. What we're hearing about the New York Rangers, Gensel interest, Kane reunion, and Igor Shashurkin's next deal. This article was published on The Athletic two days ago on June 25th by Arthur Staple and Peter Bowe, and it will be linked in the description if you want to read this yourself. But the part that we care about was actually posted onto an article on HockeyPatrol.com because Tom Banks summarized one of the main points from The Athletic's piece, and of course because The Athletic is paid for material, we cannot go out there and screenshot that. HockeyPatrol.com, however, is not paid for material, it's free for anybody, so I feel comfortable going out there and looking at this quote. Let's take a look at what Peter Bowe says about the New York Rangers and Trevor Zegras. What we can say is that Zegras, who trains in the offseason at Prentice Hockey Performance alongside of Chris Kreider, has had the Rangers as his ideal destination for a long time. Ducks GM Pat Verbeek has had some decent interest from at least one team, believed to be the Flyers, but is asking for a very expensive return for Zegras, who had an injury plague 23-24 and finished with 15 points in 31 games, Bo said. So there you go. Trevor Zegras, who is himself from Bedford, New York, USA, wants to go to New York, USA. Wow, what a crazy coincidence. I'm so surprised that his number one preferred destination is the New York Rangers. But either way, this does make a little bit more sense than some of the other conversations we have had in the past. Hey, Montreal, right? Cole Caulfield is on Montreal, so maybe Zegers would want to go and play with his buddy. Hey, Detroit, they had the Magic Man, Pavel Datsuk, Hall of Fame player now, by the way. Big congrats over to the Magic Man. Maybe Trevor Zegers could do some sort of a revival of magician speak in Motown. And then there were the other teams that have been tossed around in there, whether or not they could be suitors for Zagros, but ultimately it was going to boil down to a few things. It was going to boil down to the price, what exactly is it that the Anaheim Ducks want in exchange for Zagros, and whether or not these teams would be willing to pay that. Because as we've been talking about when it comes to the Montreal stuff, trade price returns were getting kind of whack. Everybody was talking about, oh, it's going to be a top prospect. It's going to be a top pick. Maybe it's fifth overall from Montreal to get sent over to Anaheim for Zegras. Maybe for Chicago and Bedard's sake, it's a second overall pick. Or maybe it's another super highly talented prospect. Like, there were a lot of crazy ideas that were getting thrown out as potential returns for Zegras. And because there was some sort of a bidding war that was apparent, it made it seem like it was a much bigger deal than it may be now. And the reason I say that is because now that we apparently know that Zagreus' number one destination is New York, it makes Anaheim's job a lot more difficult. Because now the Rangers can just easily sit back and say, okay, well, we don't want to pay the price you have for Zagreus because we have the leverage here. We know that it's in your client's best interest to trade him here to us. He wants us, we want him, but because there's mutual interest, it means that we're just not going to bite at whatever trade demand price you have. We have leverage here, Anaheim, sorry to say. Not to mention the fact that the opportunity would be awesome in New York as well, with everybody talking about how disappointing these guys like Sabanajad, Kreider, and Panarin were in the finals, or not the finals, but the conference finals, excuse me, with all the conversation about change being needed on the Rangers' forward core, 
it opens the door for a really good opportunity for a young stud like Zegris to bring some heat to the Big Apple and make things his own. He already thrives under big spotlights around the NHL. I mean, he was the invitee to the All-Star Game skills competition for a reason. And just playing in Madison Square Garden as a home arena, where he's already from New York and has that star power in his veins, this could be a really good fit. It's just... Now, New York probably doesn't have an incentive to pay whatever premium it is to get him because they know that he wants to go there. Plus, I didn't realize that the guy's, like, actively training and working out with Chris Kreider, of all people. Like, I get it, you could say there was a friendship angle with Montreal because of Cole Caulfield and these guys were best buds and yada yada yada, right? We've heard that song and dance before, but Zegras and Kreider? Huh, that's really interesting. It's not even like Kreider has many connections to areas where Trevor Zegers would be. I mean, Chris Kreider isn't from New York. He's from Massachusetts. So I guess maybe because he's playing in New York, it's a lot easier to do that. But when you think about the possibilities, I mean, Zegers and Kreider playing together, I don't want to say that that sounds like a good fit because honestly, I don't really see it. But Zegers with Panarin, that's kind of doubling down on the skill, right? I mean, Zegers making a little flip pass from behind the net out in front to Artemi who can dangle by everybody, or Zegras setting up a guy like Zabanajad for one tease, that sounds like a pretty good option as well. I mean, there's a lot of skill on that Rangers forward core, and obviously if you wanted to idealize how everything works out into the long term, having Zegras grow up alongside of an Alexi Lafreniere, hey, that sounds pretty good. I think both of these guys could really mesh well stylistically. Lafreniere brings the poise and the quick improvisation and decision making. Trevor Zegras is bring in the flair. And I get it, it's easy to say, oh yeah, in ideal situations, you could have amazing things happen. Adam Fox to Zegris, beautiful dangle out in front for Panarin, stuff like that, right? It's easy to come to those conclusions, but of course, the fit is never guaranteed. I will say, though, it's a lot easier to see that fit work out rather than the, oh, Zegris with Mason McTavish and Cutter Goches of the world, you know, that hard-nosed, physical kind of style that they like to play. Just in case you needed that reminder, the idea was, hey, Pat Verbeek was this physical dude when he played in the NHL and he made a living playing that style. So acquiring these guys, Leo Carlson, Mason McTavish, Cutter Goche up front, that's a lot more in the mold that he prefers as a player versus a Trevor Zegers who is smaller, a lot flashier, a lot less physical, and a lot less two-way capable, but a player nonetheless who probably has the potential to get more points than some of these guys in a given power play situation or maybe even in a full season. So it's all stylistic at the end of the day. I feel like for the Rangers, they do cater a lot more to that skill game, so it would make sense if Zegris wants to go there. But of course, you know, the other connections, he's friends with Kreider, he's from the area. This is an easy one to conclude to. If you're a fan of the New York Rangers, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to what exactly a Trevor Zegris is worth, in your opinion. What do you think the price is for him to get traded over there? What do you feel comfortable giving up? What prospects, what picks, what extra stuff do you think would make this work? If you want to make it simple, you want to just do one for one? Do you want to go like Capo Caco or something? Or make it a little bit sweeter for the Ducks, Capo Caco, and uh, let's just say a third or something like that. Just tossing out some random ideas off the top of my head here. If you're a fan of the Anaheim Ducks, what is it that you want from the Rangers to get this Segers trade done? And... What are your thoughts on the leverage all of a sudden disappearing because we know that Z wants to go over to New York. If you're a fan of Montreal, you're a fan of Philadelphia, you're a fan of the Detroit Red Wings or the Chicago Blackhawks, what are your opinions about Zegras not specifically wanting your team and wanting to go over to the Big Apple? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash 99. And bye.